Welcome back to Z Coins today. We're diving into the fascinating world of coin collecting with a special focus on a half dollar coin that holds a significant place in American history. We're talking about the 1776 to 1976 bicentennial half dollar. So, if you've ever wondered about the value and history of this iconic coin, you're in the right place. Let's get started. The 1776 to 1976 half dollar was minted to commemorate the 200th anniversary of the United States Declaration of Independence. This special issue was designed to honor America's bicentennial, and it has intrigued collectors and history enthusiasts alike for decades. So what makes this coin so special, and why is it worth paying attention to? First, let's take a closer look at its history. The design for the 1776 to 1976 bicentennial half dollar was the result of a nationwide competition to celebrate America's 200th birthday. The winning design was created by Dennis R. Williams and featured the Liberty Bell superimposed over the moon on the reverse side, while the obverse side retained the classic profile of President John F. Kennedy. The decision to include the Liberty Bell and the moon was symbolic. The Liberty Bell represents American freedom, while the moon signifies the achievements of the U.S. space program. The coin was minted in both copper nickel and 40% silver versions, with the silver ones being slightly more sought after by collectors. Now, let's talk about the mint marks. The 1776 to 1976 half dollar was struck at three different mints, Philadelphia, Denver, and San Francisco. Each mint had its own distinct mint mark. Collectors often look for these mint marks as they can affect the coin's value. However, most bicentennial half dollars are not incredibly rare, but some specific varieties and conditions can make them more valuable. One particular version that collectors should be aware of is the 40% silver proof coin minted at the San Francisco Mint. These coins were sold in proof sets and are often more valuable than the copper nickel versions. But remember, even among silver proofs, condition plays a huge role in value. So, what is the current market value of these coins? Generally, a common 1776 to 1976 bicentennial half dollar in average circulated condition might be worth between $1 to $2. However, if you have a coin in excellent uncirculated or proof condition, its value can increase significantly. For instance, a silver proof coin in mint condition can fetch anywhere from $10 to $20, while certain rarer mint marks or varieties can go for $30 or more. Additionally, if you have a coin in pristine condition, such as a high-grade MS67 or higher, it could command a price of $80 to $100 or even more, depending on the specific characteristics of the coin and current market demand. Finding these coins is relatively easy. They're often found in old change jars or estate sales. But to maximize their value, it's important to preserve them properly. Store your coins in a cool, dry place, and consider using protective holders to prevent damage. If you believe you have a particularly valuable coin, it's a good idea to get it appraised by a professional numismatist. Whether you're a seasoned collector or just starting out, the 1776 to 1976 bicentennial half dollar is a great addition to any collection. Its historical significance and unique design make it a piece of American heritage that's worth appreciating. We're diving into a fascinating piece of numismatic history the 1971 P Mint Mark Half Dollar Coin. We'll explore its historical significance, its value, and why it might be worth a lot more than you think. So, if you're a coin collector or just curious about rare finds, stick around. Let's kick things off by taking a closer look at the 1971 P Mint Mark Half Dollar. As you can see, this coin features the profile of President John F. Kennedy, which has become iconic since it was first introduced in 1964. The reverse side of the coin shows the presidential seal, 
The 1971 half dollar is particularly interesting because it was minted in Philadelphia, which is denoted by the P mint mark. It's one of the few coins from this era to carry a mint mark, making it a bit special for collectors. To understand why this coin is significant, let's take a step back in time. The 1970s were a period of significant change in the United States. The country was dealing with economic shifts, and the Coinage Act of 1965 had led to the reduction of silver content in coins. By 1971, the Kennedy half dollar was made of a copper nickel clad, which was different from the silver versions issued earlier. The 1971 P mint mark half dollar was part of a series that replaced the previous silver coins. Though it's not made of silver, its historical value is significant. But how does it fare in today's market? As of now, the 1971 P mint mark half dollar is worth more than its face value, but not exceptionally high. On average, you can find these coins selling for around $75 to $100, depending on their condition and rarity. Coins in mint state or higher grades can fetch even more. Speaking of condition, the value of the 1971 P mint mark half dollar can vary significantly based on its grade. Coins are graded on a scale from 1 to 70, with 70 being a perfect, flawless specimen. Most coins you find will be in lower grades, which affects their market value. Here's a quick rundown of what to look for. A coin in mint state condition, like MS65 or higher, is going to be worth more. Look for details like sharpness of the design, luster, and minimal wear. Coins with less wear and better overall appearance are more desirable to collectors. If you have a 1971 P mint mark half dollar and want to know its value, consider getting it professionally graded. This will help you determine its market value and potentially increase its selling price if you decide to part with it. Another tip for collectors is to keep an eye on auctions and coin shows. The value of coins can fluctuate, and you might find that certain times are better for selling or buying based on market trends. So, to recap, the 1971 P mint mark half dollar is a noteworthy piece of American coinage with a fascinating history. While it may not be worth a fortune, it holds value due to its unique mint mark and historical context. If you're holding on to one of these coins, it's definitely worth checking out its condition and potentially getting it graded. We're diving into a fascinating topic for collectors and investors alike, the 1972 D Mint Mark Half Dollar Coin. If you've got one of these in your collection or you're thinking about investing in it, you won't want to miss this. We're talking about its history, why it's worth a lot of money, and its current market value. So let's get started. Let's start with the basics. The 1972 D half dollar is part of the Kennedy half dollar series, which was first minted in 1964 to honor President John F. Kennedy after his assassination. The coin features a profile of Kennedy on the obverse and the great seal of the United States on the reverse. Now, you might be wondering what makes the 1972 D half dollar special compared to other years. The D mint mark stands for the Denver Mint, where this particular coin was struck. The Denver Mint is one of the main facilities where U.S. coins are produced, and each mint has its own unique mark. The 1972 D half dollar, in particular, has garnered attention for a few reasons. In 1972, the U.S. Mint produced over 246 million half dollars. That's a substantial number, but what makes certain 1972 D coins stand out? It all comes down to a rare and intriguing feature known as the 1972 D double diverse variety. This error occurred during the minting process, where the die used to strike the coin was inadvertently doubled, resulting in a noticeable doubling effect on the date and inscriptions on the obverse. This error is relatively rare and is highly sought after by collectors. Collectors are especially interested in these double die coins because they are unique and can be worth significantly more than regular 1972 D half dollars. 
The 1972 D double die obverse has become one of the most famous error coins in modern U.S. numismatic history. So, what's the value of these coins today? Well, the regular 1972 D half dollars typically trade for face value or a small premium above it. However, the double die variety can command a much higher price. Depending on the coin's condition, known as its grade, these coins can be worth anywhere from $70 to $100 or even more. In recent years, the market for these coins has been quite strong. High-grade examples, those that are in near mint or mint state condition, can fetch even higher prices. It's worth keeping an eye on recent auction results and market trends if you're looking to buy or sell one of these rare coins. If you think you might have a 1972 D double die obverse in your collection, it's a good idea to have it professionally graded by a reputable service like the Numismatic Guarantee Corporation, NGC, or the professional coin grading service, PCGS. They can authenticate and provide a grade which can significantly impact the coin's value. Whether you're a seasoned collector or just starting out, knowing the value and history of your coins can make a big difference. The 1972 D half dollar, particularly the double die variety, is a prime example of how a small minting error can lead to a valuable and coveted piece of numismatic history. We have an exciting topic for all you coin enthusiasts and collectors out there. We're diving deep into the world of the 1776 to 1976 bicentennial half dollar. We'll explore its history, significance, and why it's worth quite a bit on the market today. So let's get started. First things first, let's talk about what makes the 1776 to 1976 bicentennial half dollar so special. This coin was minted to celebrate the 200th anniversary of America's independence and it has quite a unique design that distinguishes it from other coins in the series. The front, or obverse, of the coin features the classic portrait of President John F. Kennedy, but with a twist. For this special edition, the reverse side, or back of the coin, showcases a depiction of the Liberty Bell, which is paired with a new design element, a rendition of the moon in the background. On the reverse, you'll see the Liberty Bell, which is an iconic symbol of American freedom. And in the background, there's a small depiction of the moon marking the 200th anniversary of American independence and our nation's progress. Now, let's take a quick dive into the history of this coin. The 1776 to 1976 bicentennial half dollar was issued as part of a nationwide celebration. In 1975 and 1976, the United States Mint produced these coins to honor the bicentennial of the Declaration of Independence. They were available in circulation and were a popular choice among collectors at the time. Produced at the Philadelphia, Denver, and San Francisco Mint facilities, these coins came with various mint marks. Philadelphia's coins have no mint mark, Denver's coins are marked with a D, and San Francisco's coins carry an S. Each mint location contributed to the overall production of these commemorative coins. One key point to remember is that while these coins were minted in large quantities, their value today can still be significant depending on their condition and mint mark. Coins in excellent condition, or those that are considered uncirculated, can fetch a higher price on the market. So, what's the current market value of these coins? The 1776 to 1976 bicentennial half dollar typically ranges in value. For a coin in average circulated condition, you might be looking at a value of around $1 to $3. However, if you have a coin in uncirculated or proof condition, particularly those with rare mint marks or errors, prices can rise significantly. For instance, High-grade examples of the 1976S proof half dollar can be worth $85 to $100 or even more, depending on their quality and whether they are graded by professional services like PCGS or NGC. The value can also be influenced by factors such as demand, rarity, 
and the overall numismatic market trends. If you're looking to buy or sell these coins, platforms like eBay, Heritage Auctions, or local coin shops are great places to start. Always ensure you have a proper grading of your coin to get the best value. Here are a few tips for collectors. First, always handle your coins carefully and consider using protective holders. Second, keep an eye on market trends and recent sales to understand the current value. And lastly, don't hesitate to consult with a professional numismatist if you have a high value coin or are unsure about its grade. So, there you have it. Everything you need to know about the 1776 to 1976 bicentennial half dollar. It's a fascinating piece of American history with a story and value that can capture the interest of any coin collector. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to hit that like button, subscribe for more content, and drop a comment below if you have any questions or if you own a bicentennial half dollar yourself. We're diving into an incredible piece of American numismatic history, the 1974 Kennedy half dollar coin. This coin, often overlooked, has some versions that are worth much more than you'd expect. In this video, we'll cover everything from the coin's design, its history, to why certain 1974 half dollars are worth as much as $1.65 or even $1.100 on the current market. Let's get started. Let's start by setting the stage with some background on the Kennedy half dollar. This coin was first minted in 1964 to commemorate President John F. Kennedy following his tragic assassination in November 1963. The half dollar became an immediate symbol of national unity and pride. People were so attached to these coins that many hoarded them, making them harder to find in circulation. But here's the interesting part. By 1971, the U.S. Mint stopped using silver in the Kennedy half dollar, moving to a copper nickel clad composition. That's why by the time we get to 1974, the half dollars are mostly made from copper nickel, with only the core made of copper. Yet, there are still some unique mint marks, varieties, and errors from 1974 that have made certain coins extremely valuable today. Now, let's dive into mint marks, because they play a crucial role in determining a coin's rarity and value. Mint marks tell us where a coin was produced. In 1974, Kennedy half dollars were minted at three different locations. It's important to know that different mint marks can have significant effects on a coin's value. For example, while a standard 1974 half dollar from the Philadelphia or Denver mint may not be worth more than its face value in circulated condition, a San Francisco proof coin could be much more valuable. Always check your coins under a magnifying glass for the mint mark. It's usually located right below Kennedy's portrait, near the rim of the coin. Here's where things start to get exciting. The 1974D Kennedy half dollar is known for one of the most famous varieties, the double die obverse, or DDO for short. This error occurred when the coin's design was stamped twice at slightly different angles, creating a doubling effect. This error is most noticeable in the lettering on the front or obverse of the coin, particularly in the words asterisk, asterisk, liberty, asterisk, asterisk, and the date asterisk, asterisk, 1974, asterisk, asterisk, dot. In lower grades, a 1974D DDO might fetch around $20-$50. But in higher grades, like MS-65 or MS-66, mint state condition, this error coin can be worth $100 or even more, depending on the market and demand. To check if you have a DDO variety, you'll need a magnifying glass or a jeweler's loop. Look carefully at the letters in Liberty and the numbers in 1974 to spot any noticeable doubling. Now let's talk about the San Francisco Mint and its proof coins. If you come across a 1974 Kennedy half dollar with an S mint mark, chances are it's a proof coin. Proof coins are specially struck for collectors and have a mirror-like finish with sharp details. They were never intended for circulation, 
making them more valuable, especially if they are still in pristine condition. I in good condition, these coins can range in value from $5 to $20. However, a perfect PR69 or PR70 proof coin can go for significantly more, sometimes hitting the $50-$100 mark in the right market. But that's not all. If your 1974s half dollar is a silver proof, then you're holding something even rarer. Although no regular 1974 half dollars were minted in silver, a few special silver clad proof sets were struck for collectors. These can easily be worth over $100 in top condition. You're probably wondering, what makes some 1974 half dollars worth only a few dollars and others worth over $100? Here are the key factors that affect a coin's value. The better the condition, the higher the value. A coin graded in MS65 or higher, mint state, is usually worth much more than a worn coin. Certain varieties, like the 1974 DDDO, are much rarer than regular coins, making them more valuable. As we mentioned earlier, proof coins and coins from certain mints can be more valuable than others. Coins with unique minting errors, like the double die variety, are highly sought after by collectors. Coin collecting trends can fluctuate, so the market value can go up or down depending on what. Collectors are looking for dot as of now. Regular circulated 1974 Kennedy half dollars are typically worth their face value of 50 cents. But here's where things get interesting. If you have a 1974 D double die variety in uncirculated condition, MS65 or higher, you're looking at a coin that could fetch between $1.65 and $1.100, maybe even more depending on the condition and how much demand there is. If you have a 1974 half dollar and are wondering if it's valuable, here's what you should do. If you suspect you have a valuable coin, like a DDO or proof, Consider sending it to a professional grading service like PCGS or NGC. They can authenticate the coin and assign it a grade, which will help you determine its value. You can sell these coins on platforms like eBay, Heritage Auctions, or through local coin shops. Make sure to do your research so you can price your coin correctly based on its grade and rarity. Coin values fluctuate over time so it's always good to keep an eye on auction results and trends in the numismatic community. And there you have it, folks. The 1974 Kennedy half dollar may seem like just another coin at first glance, but with varieties like the 1974 D double die and high grade proofs, it can be worth a lot more than 50 cents. Remember to always check your coins for mint marks, errors, and condition. You never know when you might stumble upon a treasure worth up to $100 or even more. We're diving into a fascinating coin from American history, the 1977 D. Kennedy half dollar. You've probably seen this coin in your pocket change, but did you know it can be worth more than its face value? Some collectors are willing to pay up to $100 or more for the right coin. In this video, we'll break down the coin's history what makes it valuable, and how you can determine if you have a rare and valuable 1977 D half dollar in your collection. The Kennedy half dollar was first minted in 1964, just months after the tragic assassination of President John F. Kennedy. It was introduced as a tribute to the 35th President of the United States, and since then, it has become a symbol of his legacy. Originally, the coin was made from 90% silver in 1964, but as time went on, the U.S. Mint reduced the silver content, and by 1971, the Kennedy half dollar was struck entirely from a copper nickel clad composition. Fast forward to 1977. The United States Mint was still producing Kennedy half dollars, but by this point, many people were no longer using them in daily transactions. Most half dollars ended up in collections, circulated rolls, or saved as keepsakes. But what about the 1977 D Mint Mark half dollar? Why is it getting attention now? Let's find out. The D Mint Mark on this coin stands for the Denver Mint, where this half dollar was produced. 
In 1977, over 31 million Kennedy half dollars were struck at the Denver Mint alone, which might make you think these coins are quite common. And while they are easily found in circulated condition, there are specific factors that can make some of these coins extremely valuable to collectors. Out of the 31 million coins produced at the Denver Mint, only a fraction of them in pristine condition or with certain minting errors can fetch high prices in today's market. So what should you be looking for? Let's break it down. To understand why some 1977 D. Kennedy half dollars are worth more than others, we need to focus on several key factors, condition, mint errors, and demand. First up, condition. A coin's condition, or grade, plays a huge role in determining its value. Coins are graded on a scale from 1 to 70, with 70 being a perfect, flawless coin. A 1977 D half dollar in average circulated condition is worth around 50 cents to a few dollars, but if you find one in mint state, MS, condition, meaning it's uncirculated with sharp details and nowhere, you're looking at a coin that can be worth significantly more. For example, a 1977 D half dollar graded MS65 can be worth anywhere between $10 and $25, depending on the market. But if you manage to find one graded MS67 or higher, the value can jump dramatically, often reaching $60 to $100 or more. These high-grade coins are rare because even the smallest imperfection during the minting process or over time can lower the grade. So, if you have an uncirculated 1977 D half dollar tucked away somewhere, it might be time to get it professionally graded. Another factor that can skyrocket the value of a 1977 D half dollar is mint errors. One of the most sought after errors is the double die variety, where certain details on the coin appear to be struck twice, creating a slightly doubled image. This is most noticeable on the lettering or in President Kennedy's profile. Coins with this kind of error can sell for a premium, sometimes in the hundreds of dollars depending on the severity of the doubling and the coin's overall condition. Other errors that collectors seek out include off-center strikes, planchet errors, or clipped planchets. These coins are rare, and their unique imperfections make them highly desirable to error coin collectors. Finally, demand. Kennedy half dollars have a dedicated following of collectors, both casual and serious. This demand keeps the value of rare coins, like high-grade 1977 D halves, steadily increasing. If you have a 1977 D coin in excellent condition, or with a notable error, now might be the perfect time to sell or hold onto it as values could rise even further. So, what is the 1977 D Kennedy half dollar worth today? As of 2024, here's a general breakdown of its value based on condition. The coin market is always shifting, and prices can fluctuate based on supply and demand. However, one thing is for sure, the 1977 D. Kennedy half dollar is more than just a piece of loose change. If you find one in great condition, or with an exciting mint error, it could be worth a pretty penny. Now, you might be wondering, how do you know if your 1977 D. half dollar is valuable? Here's what to do. Ensure it has the D-Mint mark, indicating it was struck in Denver. Use a magnifying glass or jeweler's loop to check for wear, scratches, or damage. If your coin has sharp details with no visible wear, it could be uncirculated. Pay close attention to the details on the coin. Look for double dies, off-center strikes, or any other unusual markings. If you think your coin is in mint state condition or has an error, consider sending it to a professional grading service like PCGS or NGC for an official grade. This can significantly increase its value. And there you have it. The 1977 D. Kennedy half dollar might seem like just another coin, but for collectors, it can be worth far more than its face value. Whether you've got one in your collection or you're looking to add one, this coin is definitely worth keeping an eye on. Have you ever looked at your pocket change and wondered if any of it me were talking about a hidden gem, 
the 1982D mint mark half dollar. Now you might be wondering, why is the 1982D half dollar so special? On the surface, it may look like any other Kennedy half dollar, but it's far more valuable than its 50 cent face value to collectors today. Some examples of this coin have been known to fetch anywhere between $1.50 to $1.100 or even more. Intrigued? Well, let's dive into the fascinating history and details behind this coin. The Kennedy half dollar was first introduced in 1964, just months after the tragic assassination of President John F. Kennedy. It was created to honor his legacy, and the coin quickly became a favorite among Americans. Now, the D mint mark on the 1982 half dollar indicates that this coin was minted in Denver, Colorado, one of the primary mints of the United States. But here's where it gets interesting. Unlike the original Kennedy half dollars, which contained silver, by 1982, the mint had stopped using silver altogether. This means that the 1982 D half dollar is made from a copper nickel clad composition. So, if it's not the silver content making it valuable, what is? It all comes down to condition, rarity, and demand in the collector's market. Coins in mint state condition, particularly those graded by professional services like PCGS or NGC, can sell for top dollar. The higher the grade, the more valuable the coin becomes. Grading is a critical part of understanding a coin's value. A coin in mint state means it hasn't been in circulation or shows very little wear. Most coins that have been used will have scratches, dings, and other signs of wear. But if you happen to come across a 1982 D half dollar that is in pristine condition, it could be worth much more than you'd expect. As of 2024, some high-grade 1982 D Kennedy half dollars are valued between $1.50 to $1.100 depending on their condition. Coins graded MS 65, that's mint state 65 out of 70, can easily fetch these prices, and even higher grade coins might be worth more. It's not just the physical condition though, some rare errors or varieties from the 1982 D mint can push the value even higher. So let's talk about some of the rare varieties and errors that collectors keep an eye out for. Errors like double dies, off-center strikes, or even planchet errors can significantly raise the value of a coin. Unfortunately, no major errors have been confirmed for the 1982 D half dollar, but collectors are always on the lookout. While the 1982 D isn't known for any major mint errors, its value is boosted by something even more important, demand. Kennedy half dollars are a staple for many coin collectors. The 1982D, in particular, is sought after for completing sets of modern half dollars. Collectors want high quality examples, and that demand keeps prices strong. If you're wondering how these coins have performed on the market, their value has steadily risen over the years. Especially for coins in higher grades, prices have consistently increased as collectors become more interested in modern era half dollars. Even circulated examples can sell for a few dollars, but it's the mint state coins that collectors are really after. So, how can you find a valuable 1982 D half dollar? Here are a few tips for all you treasure hunters out there. One, check your change and old coin collections. Asterisk, asterisk, even though the half dollar isn't commonly circulated anymore, you might have one sitting around from years ago. Point two, look for coins in mint state condition. Asterisk, asterisk, if the coin has little to no visible wear, it could be worth grading. Point three, consider professional grading. Asterisk, asterisk, if you believe your coin is in near perfect condition, sending it to a grading service could unlock its true value. Point four, check online coin. Marketplaces and auctions. Asterisk, asterisk, sometimes collectors sell high grade examples, and it's a good way to understand the going market rate. So, whether you're a seasoned coin collector or just getting started, the 1982 D. Kennedy half dollar is a coin that could be worth more than you think. Keep your eyes open, and who knows, 
you might just find one in your pocket change or coin collection worth $1.50, $1.100, or even more. We're diving into a fascinating topic that's been generating a lot of buzz in the coin collecting world. We're talking about the 1985 D Mint Mark Kennedy half dollar and why this seemingly ordinary coin could be worth $1.40 to $1.100 or even more in today's market. Stick around, because we're covering the coin's history, why it's valued so highly, and what to look out for if you happen to have one in your collection. Let's get started. The Kennedy half dollar has been an iconic piece of American currency since its introduction in 1964, shortly after the tragic assassination of President John F. Kennedy. Designed by Gilroy Roberts and Frank Gasparro, the coin was intended as a tribute to the beloved president. But did you know that by the mid-1980s, the half dollar wasn't widely circulated anymore? Most people preferred quarters and dollar bills, and the half dollar had mostly shifted to being a collector's item. However, the U.S. Mint continued producing half dollars in limited quantities, particularly at the Denver Mint, which brings us to our featured coin, the 1985 D Mint Mark Kennedy Half Dollar. So, what exactly makes the 1985 D Mint Mark Half Dollar special? First, let's break down what the D means. The D indicates that this coin was minted at the Denver Mint. The Denver Mint is known for producing high-quality coins, and the 1985 D Half Dollar is no exception. While there were millions of these coins produced, finding one in top condition today is quite rare. Many coins from this era have been damaged, circulated heavily, or stored improperly, which decreases their value. But coins that have been well-preserved in mint state condition can be worth quite a bit more than their face value. So why would a 1985 D. Kennedy half dollar be worth $1.40 to $100 or more? Let's break it down. Coins in mint state MS condition, meaning they were never circulated, can fetch much higher prices. These coins will have sharp details, a lustrous surface, and no signs of wear. For example, a 1985 D. Kennedy half dollar graded MS 65 or higher can easily be valued at around $1.40 to $1.100 or more, depending on market demand. Coins graded MS-66 or MS-67 are extremely rare and highly sought after by collectors. Half dollars from the 1980s, especially those with the Denver Mint mark, have seen a surge in popularity among collectors in recent years. Many collectors are looking to complete their Kennedy half dollar sets, and finding coins in pristine condition is becoming more difficult. Remember, by 1985, the half dollar wasn't commonly used in everyday transactions. This means fewer people were handling these coins, but it also means fewer coins were produced to be widely circulated. Those that were minted were often set aside by collectors, leading to limited availability on the open market today. Some 1985 D. Kennedy half dollars have unique minting errors like double dies, misaligned strikes, or other varieties. Coins with such errors can significantly increase in value depending on the rarity and type of error. Now, you might be wondering, how can I tell if my 1985 D half dollar is worth anything? Here are a few steps to help you determine its value. First, take a close look at the condition of your coin. If it has been circulated and shows wear, it's probably only worth face value or slightly more. However, if it appears to be in mint state, with no scratches or wear, you may have a more valuable coin on your hands. Look closely for any noticeable errors or varieties, like a double die or off-center strike. These could raise the value considerably. If you believe your coin is in excellent condition, you might want to get it professionally graded by a service like PCGS or NGC. Graded coins often sell for higher prices because collectors trust the certification. Use online coin price guides, such as the Red Book or other numismatic resources, to get an idea of what similar coins are selling for. Be sure to check auction sites like eBay or professional auction houses like Heritage Auctions for recent sales. 
So what's the current market value of a 1985 D. Kennedy half dollar? As of right now, the prices can vary depending on the coin's condition, but coins in MS65 or higher can sell anywhere between $1.40 and $1.100, sometimes even more if the demand is high. Why such a wide range? Well, like any collectible, the value of coins is driven by demand. If a lot of collectors are looking to complete their Kennedy half dollar sets or find a coin with a particular grade, prices can skyrocket. Additionally, the market for coins can fluctuate over time. As more collectors enter the hobby and the supply of top quality coins diminishes, prices are likely to rise even further. So if you've got a 1985 D half dollar, now might be a great time to get it appraised or graded. And there you have it, folks. The 1985 D Mint Mark Kennedy half dollar might not be the first coin that comes to mind when you think of valuable coins. But as we've seen, it can be worth far more than its face value, especially in pristine condition. If you've got one of these coins tucked away in your collection, take a closer look. It could be worth $1.40, $1.100, or even more. And as always, when dealing with collectibles, condition and rarity are key. Make sure to like this video if you found it helpful. And don't forget to subscribe for more insights into coin collecting, rare coins, and more. Let us know in the comments if you have a 1985 D. Kennedy half dollar, or if there's another coin you'd like us to cover next. Thanks for watching, and happy collecting!